Are we on? Good morning. Good morning. I walked out of the bedroom uh, yesterday morning on my day off, and I, did, I proclaimed to Lisa, I'm in trouble. She, uh, she was there in the kitchen, and Cameron, our son, and they were kind of preparing breakfast and coffee, and uh, she said, by, wh- by what all means, why are you in trouble? And uh, I said, you know how I've been waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, and I can't, I can't go back to sleep? She said, did that happen again this morning on your day off? She said, I'm sorry. She said, but wait a minute, you went back to sleep. And I said, yes, I know, that's the problem. I started going over the sermon in my mind, and it flew right to sleep. <laughs> so if you guys take a 15-minute nap here, you're welcome. Uh, the sermon is on giving. Do we, we got the... I got the clicker. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a guest speaker. I am in charge. Wow. Okay, the lesson today is on giving, and I really wanted to come up with a title that was better than just giving. In fact, everything I read said, do not, whatever you do, just talk about giving. Give it a clever name, and I, I, did, uh, I did come up with some. Uh, here's one. Give, just do it. It's kind of a Nike, kind of a sport theme. Oh, you'll love this one. 101 Reasons to Give. We were going to have to order lunch with that one. Okay. Press down, shaken together. What's not to like? Oh, and here, see if you can catch this one. Change happens. Real giving's planned. So pocket change, get it? So, okay. Giving. We'll just, we'll talk about giving. Uh, why, am, why am I here? So we got, it was probably natural for, for Craig to say, hey, uh, Stephen brings us the lesson. Uh, I am here for a couple of reasons. Uh, for one, I am a regular Joe, just like you. I have a job. In fact, I have lots of jobs. Uh, over the years, I've had many, uh, just soccer coach and elder is kind of a job. Uh, engineer is my main job, but it's the only one that gives me a paycheck. So I'm just like you. I have a, I have a job, I have a paycheck. Uh, it, it reminds me one time we were soccer coach, we were driving the soccer kids to a soccer field that was west of town and we passed my office and I kind of said to all the kids in the car, hey, that's where I work, that's my job. And I could hear from the back of the car, I thought you were a soccer coach. <laughs> well, if it paid me like an engineer, I'd, I'd probably do it. The other, another reason, I, 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 as I'm up here, I want you to kind of forget that I'm on the eldership. We're going to talk about giving but that in no way gives me any uh, information on your giving. We don't, we don't look at you individually. I, don't know, I know of two people in this congregation how they give, me and Lisa. That's all I know. And I, so I don't want you to think I have some special information on your particular giving. And, and uh, I, I, I was told not to admit this, but I don't even know what bank we use. <laughs> so... I, we do talk about your money quite a bit. It doesn't, it's not important that I know a checking account number or a savings account number or where it's kept, but we, we pray about that a lot. I, I just don't know where it is. So the, the other thing about Stephen not delivering this message and, and me doing it, I didn't want anybody thinking that somebody was up here saying, you need to give better because, so I can benefit from it. Now, that's nothing against Stephen, and I know he, his heart is completely in the right place about every message he gives to you guys. So, but I, I just wanted to take that off the table, and, and when I say that, I also have to add, I volunteered for this job. So months ago, I volunteered to the rest of the elders said, I kind of wanted to share some things on my journey on giving that has helped me. So let's just let's dive into it. Let's talk about uh, money and God's word for a minute. There is so much of God's word that is about money. Take three things. Money, faith, and prayer. Which do you think there is more about in God's word? 
2,300, over 2,000 verses about money. That's twice as much as prayer and faith combined. That's how much God talks about money. That's how much it's important that you handle the money he gives you. Luke, just look at the, the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke. One in seven verses talks about money. It's something that's very prevalent in his word. So if, if we delivered a lesson on prayer, would we give an apology and say, hey, you know, a lot of things that I read was, if you give, uh, if you give a lesson on giving, make sure you kind of apologize to the visitors because, hey, we're going to talk about some family stuff. Why, why apologize? It's so integral to God's word. If we gave a lesson on prayer or faith, we wouldn't give you an apology. We, we would say, this is what God wants us to talk about. Uh, and, and with any lesson, giving may not be your, your problem. You may have it down. And I need to acknowledge that because this congregation, it knows how to give. So we, we've had many giving opportunities where we've put something before you and said, we need, to, we need to cover this work, and you have given. So by no means does us addressing giving today not want to acknowledge that we have a giving congregation. And if you're visiting today, I hope you, I hope you realize we have, we have had some very sacrificial giving in this congregation, and that may be not, not be your problem. This, this you know... Uh, maybe it is the praying. We need to have some, you know, I don't know. We need to have a lesson for you. But uh, if, if giving is your issue, let's talk about it today. And, and talking about Stephen, I, I want to, I wanna, if, if, I don't want to say we're going to open the floodgates on lessons on giving. But, but if Stephen talks about giving, I, I think it's perfectly wonderful for us to talk about that more often. Talk about our money. So if, if you hear lessons in the future from Stephen, just understand it's part of what God wants us to talk about. Before we can begin talking about what the New Testament says on giving, we need to talk about the Old Testament. We learn so much about God. We learn so much about, so many things about Him in the Old Testament because so interactive with His people. And giving was one of those things. So Old Testament giving started with what? Started with the tithe, a tenth part. And this was, this was what they were commanded to do. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. It's what they did. It was, it was the first ten percent. It didn't stop there. They also had first fruits offerings. So if you were, had more possessions than money, if you were a farmer, if you were a, a vineyard owner, these things you would need to do, and it's like three times a year, it was, uh, you needed to give to God the first fruits of that. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your crops. So it could have been, uh, grain, it could have been wine from a vineyard, it could have been olive oil. The, all these scriptures, honey, are addressed in scripture, addressed in the Old Testament, that if these are things you possess from your, your uh, work and your production, the first fruits, not, not the leftover, the first fruits came to God. So, even if you look at the words that God uses, that the, that the Old Testament uses, they are, they are words not always giving of these. They were, they were expected. They were uh, paying was even used. You would pay your tithe. Keep that in perspective and then realize, uh, let's, I, I, I had Brendan and he did a great job and I appreciate it. I had this scripture read before we started because I didn't want you to think tithing and first fruits were so obligatory to them that they hated it. Look what David says about his people. 
And now I have seen with joy how willing your people who are here have given to you. They gave with joy. It wasn't that they, they gave, oh, i got to give that 10%, you know. And no, they gave with joy, and, and David saw it. David saw it. It didn't stop there. It didn't stop there with the Old Testament. There were free will offerings on top of that. We need to rebuild the wall. We, we need to, uh, Moses would be told to, to put something together and he'd tell the people, we need some more money. And they did it. All the men and women, the people of Israel, whose heart moved them to bring anything for the work that the Lord had com uh, commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a free will offering to the Lord. God had told Moses, I need you to take care of this. Collect some money. As a free will offering, they brought it. They brought it. And they gave it to the Lord. If you add these things up, it's easily 30%, 40%. Let me tell you, giving 10%, 10% is giving on training wheels. The Old Testament, they, they knew how to do it. Let's move on to New Testament. What does the New Testament say about giving? The, uh, some of the material I have, uh, I kind of joked about 101 reasons. It he presents 11, 11 things the New Testament does on, says on giving. Okay, so I didn't, I'm not going to cover all 11. I did pick five. I picked five that we're going to talk about. If you want to know about the other six, you have to invite me back. But number one, give. All Christians need to give. It's what everybody does. Not all will give the same, but everyone will give. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. We look at this decide in your heart, give as you've been prospered, and we think, oh yeah, I get to choose, you know. And think about what, the old, think about what God did in the Old Testament and expected of his people and what they did joyfully. We all need to give. It's a vivid reminder that it's not all about me. It's all about God. Giving to God turns it over to him. If I possess it, if I keep it in my possession and I say it's mine, I control it, but if I give it to God, I'm, I am admitting that He is in charge and it is His in the first place. I need to, I need to give and let him, let him control it. I'm not the point. God is the point. Now, I, you know, some people say, but Steve, we, right now we just don't have the ability to give. We just, it's just, we're, we're upside down. I get it. I get it. I remember when when, when we had two jobs and we, did, we bought a house, a couple of cars, and we decided, I've got a great job at NASA, we're gonna, Lisa's going to stay home and we're going to raise kids, and a couple of years into that, we were, it, was, it was tough, it was hard, I get it, but if you are, if you are waiting, if you are waiting for that next pay raise to start giving, if you're waiting for that bonus, if you're waiting for uh, an inheritance or something to drop on you, Steve, I can't, we can't give right now, but if we, just had, if we just made a little more, we can start giving. If you're waiting for that, you'll never give. You'll never, you'll never make enough. Let me say that again. If you're not giving with what you're making now, you'll never make enough to give. You need to find it in your heart to, to give. And I, like I said, we've been there. We have been there. We got, we got to a point where I was buying transmissions out of, like they're going out of style. <laughs> and we put them all on credit card and tried to figure out how we're going to pay for them. And they had this thing back in the day, do they still have zero balance transfers? They start charging you interest on your credit card and we just go get another one and you move it. We, we paid all that off, we did. But we never allowed that to, we never allowed that to get in the way of our giving, and I'm not going to take credit. 
I'm not going to take credit for that. There was, there was one of us takes credit for that. So, I've learned a lot about giving. But giving starts now, wherever, wherever you are in your finances. So, <clears throat> give regularly. We need to give regularly. We need to give uh, at, at regular intervals. You're paid regularly, hopefully. <laughs> and we need to get, what does God's word say? On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Giving to God needs to be a regular basis. You need to get in a routine. You and your spouse, if you're not married, you, you by yourself. Our routine is she writes the check and I put it in. We always talk about what we're going to give. We agree. And, and that's our arrangement. You need to find your arrangement. If, if you're not here, if you're on vacation, if you're on the camera back there and you're not here, when you're back, you need to bring that check, not for next week, but for this week too. You need to give as you've been prospered and lay by in store every, every week. If you're paid on a monthly basis, you need to take, in, take that into account with your, with your giving. Number, th number, number six, see we're skipping. We've already skipped, we're jumping ahead. Uh, number six, give sacrificially. I wanna give you four phrases. Uh, severe trial, overwhelming joy. Severe trial, over don't seem like they go together, right? Extreme poverty and uh, rich generosity. Extreme poverty and rich generosity, they don't seem to go, these phrases don't seem to go together, but you don't think you would see them in a sentence together, but Paul did it. Paul did it. Paul was talking about the Macedonian Christians, and he was talking about their giving, and he put those phrases together talking about the same people. In the midst of severe trial, their overwhelming joy, and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I tell you that they gave as much as they have been able and even beyond their ability. Look at that phrase, their ability, beyond their ability. I don't know where you are in your giving. Is it beyond your ability? Are you like the Macedonian Christians? Maybe you're commensurate. You're, you're, you're according to your ability. Maybe you're less than your ability. Only you can know. I can't know for you. But God's Word wants us to give according to our ability. And, and when you can, give beyond your ability. Sacrificial giving, sacrificial giving says, uh, I have two blankets. I don't need two. I can give one away. Sacrificial giving says, I'm going to give the better blanket. I'm going to give the bigger blanket. I'm going to give the newer blanket. Sacrificial giving means just that. Let's, let's talk about David for a minute. David got sideways with God. And God was going to give him three choices of, of what to do to make it right. And the, the third choice was, you're going to have three days of plagues. And believe it or not, that was the best of the three choices. And so to get out of it, God, you know, David begged him to get out of it. And God, All right, to get out of it, you've got to go to this guy's house on his threshing floor, and you've got to build an altar, and you've got to sacrifice to me. Okay. Because this plague thing had, had killed a lot of people. So he goes to this guy, uh, Aruna, and, and, and he, as he's coming, the guy says, Hey, here comes the king. What do you need? And I says, I have to make, an, I have to make a sacrifice on your threshing floor. He, it's yours. You have it. And David said, No way. No, but I will buy it from you uh, for a price. I will not offer burnt 
offerings to the Lord, my God, that cost me nothing. He wanted to make sure that his giving to God was a sacrifice to him. It didn't come at no charge. When, uh, in preparing for this lesson, Lisa asked me a question. She said, do we give enough? I had to be honest. I said, no, we don't. I don't think we were giving sacrificially, and we're, we're working on that. We're working to give sacrificially. And uh, I'm not saying we've got it all figured out, but uh, we all need to pray for each other that we can, we can give as God has asked us to. Number eight, give cheerfully. Oh, great. You've told us you got, we got to give all this stuff and we've got to be happy about it. Okay, real good. Each one of you should give what you have decided in your heart and give not reluctantly, not under convulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I've got to tell you a story. It happened not far from here. In fact, it happened right here. It happened right, right here. I was standing here, uh, as the elders do, and we, we stand by the doors, and we, not to block them to keep you in, <laughs> But we stand by the doors to greet you as you go out, and if you have any need, you tell us. And one of the widow ladies was approaching me, and I could see it in her face. I could see the joy, I could see the happiness in her face. And the day before, she had, she had been at the grocery store, and the person behind her had paid it forward. Fifty bucks, fifty bucks had paid it forward for a grocery. And that was the day of one of our special giving days. And she came and she said, I didn't think I was going to be able to give. And she gave all 50, all $50. I wish, I wish she could have seen the joy in her face. It was 50 bucks. So, give proportionally. You know, <clears throat> we... Uh, The tithe was proportional. It was as more, the more you made, the more you gave. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income. As you, as you make more, you need to adjust your giving. Maybe you've had a raise recently and you haven't thought, did I take care of God with this? He, took, he just took care of me. He just took care of me, and did I, in turn, take care of him? I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. When, when a preacher tells a story, it's a preacher story. What is it when an elder tells a story? I don't know. Guy comes into the eldership, and they're, they're sitting there and says, Guys, I got a problem with my giving. I got a problem. It's a heart problem. When I made 50 bucks a week, I gave five. No problem. Five bucks, put it in. You know, as I get better, I, got, I made 500 a week, 550 bucks, boom, no problem. Guys, I'm making 5,000 a week. Do you know how much $500 is? $500 is so much. I'm just having trouble. I'm, I need you to pray for me that I can give according to my income. So one of the older uh, elders, wiser, said, let's pray together. God, I want you to help this man make only $500 so he can give according to his. We need to, as our income goes up, we need to, if you're bonused, if your income is structured on a bonus, that big check comes in a couple times a year, maybe more proportional. That's income, that's proportional. Last two things before we, that's, those are the, the five I wanted to cover. The, the other six, there's some, there's some good stuff there. I just, we just don't have time. Let's talk about this first, and let's talk about the love of money. Because sometimes I think the love of money keeps us from giving like we should. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith 
and pierced themselves with many griefs. If you have ever thought, my future could be secure if I just made more money. That's, that's the love of money. If you've ever thought, my marriage would be so much better if we just had more money. Money doesn't fix a marriage. God fix a marriage. You need God in your marriage. You don't need money. If you have more money, you'll probably have more problems. I drive by these, I drive by these signs. I think it's a power, a money ball and power or whatever. Uh, big, big, huge millions of dollars. And the, the, the sinner in me says, man, if I had that money, what, what fun I could have. Then, 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 I get, then I get, you know, kind of, oh wait, I'm a Christian. God, if I had that money, just think of all the people I could help. Money doesn't help people. God helps people. People need God. God can use money. He can use, he can use $50 better than you can use $100 million. But he needs you to give it. And he, he needs you to give it cheerfully, regularly, proportionately. If you've had a conversation with me in the last year, I've probably brought up this verse. It's just something that's been on my heart. And I want, to, I want you to know it, it affects us in everything we do. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every, uh, every f uh, family in heaven and on earth derives his, its name. I pray that out of the gracious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in the inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God. I, am fully, I fully believe that if Christ is in your heart and He is driving your decisions, your life will be better. Your life will be amazing, and your giving will be better. I only, I only bring this up because it has so much implication on your whole life, and especially your giving. The lesson is yours. It's my Robert quote for the day. If, if there's something about your life that needs to change in giving. If we need, if you need our help in prayer to help take you to that next level of giving, to start giving, to give in any of the ways we talked about, we, we can pray with you. I, and, and I want you to pray for, for everybody else that's here and their giving and, and pray for us as an eldership that we can use these funds in the best way possible. If there's any way that we can help you, Come as we stand and sing.